Hello, everybody. Welcome to week eight. I uh, hope you're having a, a great week. Um, you know, the, the spring weather is mostly beautiful with little ups and downs. And I know I talk about weather a lot, and I know that a lot of times people talk about it as just a small talk thing. But uh, I don't know. I'm just kind of always influenced and encouraged and aware of weather. And even when you think about, like, songs and things like that, you see how much weather shows up in them. Um and uh, so, uh, I don't know, I just think it's a cool thing. But if you're watching this on Monday, uh, no, just understand I'm recording this on Sunday, but it is uh, like 100% chance of rain tomorrow last I looked. So it'll be rain and then it'll be hot and then it'll be cold and then, you know, all that good stuff. So uh, yeah, the cool thing here is that you are almost to the halfway point of the class, uh, which is great. I know that it, it tends to lag at this point and it's hard to keep going. The good thing about this class, History of Rock and Roll is that we just keep adding and adding new artists, new music, uh, all sorts of new things that are important. Uh, and so hopefully that helps to keep the momentum going. The good news is you got spring break after this. So spring break, I, I leave you alone. Uh, there will be a little page that will pop up uh, that Monday, um, but there's no assignments. There's no nothing. I want you to have a good spring break. And in fact, even for spring break, I'm going to be out of touch for a little bit. Uh, so hopefully uh, we're all just good and we're all enjoying the break that we have. So what's coming up this week? This week is an interesting one. It's an important one. And we're going to actually jump way back to the beginning of the class date wise uh, and, and then come back up to where we're at in the class, which is really the uh, the late, late 60s or early 70s. Um, and so this chapter is on folk folk rock and singer songwriters and those are three different things although there are connections to them and you're going to learn about those but what's going to happen uh this week is that we're going to jump all the way back to the beginning of the class if you remember i talked back in the very first video and you learned about the influences from europe and the influences from africa and those influences from europe primarily that we're focusing on um really have to do with uh folk traditions uh, that come from Europe. So I probably mentioned back at the very beginning, but there's really four types of music. There is uh, cultural ritual music, which is music that uh, is in every culture that's tied to uh, different aspects. There, it, usually it's it's like religious or war or whatever. Then you have folk music, which is uh, once defined in a book that I read as the music of the folks. So it is kind of the everyday music that we that we all deal with. There is uh, classical music or art music, and then there is pop music. And the majority of this class covers pop music. And I've had students in the past say, you know, it's called history of rock and roll, but you really talk about pop. Well, they're as you've learned, they're, they're kind of interchangeable and they function in different ways. But the roots of our folk traditions go all the way back to Europe, particularly um, the United Kingdom, you know, England, Ireland, Scotland, Wales, um, and, and uh, Western Europe. And uh, as, as folks emigrated here, uh, those traditions came with them. So the, the tradition of ballad songs, songs that tell stories, and these actually go back uh, really probably to the beginning of, of when we had music and, and time and all of that, uh, as humans. And, um, even going through the Middle Ages, you had these, these balladeers, these troubadours and trouvères that traveled around Europe and they told stories and they gave the latest political news and they entertained and all of that. So we have a, a rich history going back to that. If any of you have taken, uh, music appreciation at all, you, you, you might remember even learning about the troubadours. Um, and so, you know, you have the people that, that, uh, that, that migrated here and emigrated here and you, they bring their music with them, right? We all do that. As cultures, we, we do that. Um, sadly, a lot of times over time, those traditions get absorbed within a, the, 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 the larger culture as a whole. And maybe we lose some of the distinctive elements. So we can go back and listen to old English music or particularly Irish music, if you're thinking of St. Patrick's Day or things like that. Uh, and we know that those traditions exist, although a lot of times they've come dangerously close to getting wiped out. But one of the things about sort of the, pro, uh, you know, uh, Protestant white American experience is that those cultures have largely been washed away. And we see that happening with other cultures as well. So if you are, are, you know, uh, from a background other than Western European, um, 
you could think back to the, the music of your culture. And what happens is as young people come in, they either reject the music of their culture or it gets absorbed within other things. So you can see this uh, all over the place. So the roots of what we're talking about here is folk music, those ballad traditions, those song traditions, and folk music can also be dance music, so square dancing, and 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 don't think of folk music as completely necessarily a white thing either, because there is, uh, you know, the blues is a great example of black folk music, right? It, it combined Western European harmonies with the black experience, and, uh, and, and there you have a, a folk tradition. Folk music is generally not written down. It is passed orally, not orally, although that is true, but also orally meaning by the ears. Uh, and so people learn it from generation to generation. So you're going to go back to the roots of that. You're going to learn about, um, uh, uh, Alan Lomax and you're going to learn about Seeger and you're going to learn about, uh, the documenting of, these uh, traditions because they were running the risk of, of disappearing. And so you have these musicologists that went and, and uh, recorded them, took these little, you know, uh, gramophones out into the, the hills and, and, and valleys and, and, you know, little towns and villages and recorded the music. You can actually still find the Lomax, Lomax recordings are on the Smithsonian website. So if you ever want to go and find those, you can. Um, and so then you're going to learn about... Um, the Almanac Singers, and you're going to learn about uh, Pete Seeger, and you're going to learn about Woody Guthrie. And Woody Guthrie is a really important figure in this tradition. Um, in terms of, you know the song, This Land is Your Land, that's Woody Guthrie. Uh, there are other ones uh, that you'll learn about as well. So he's a really important uh, figure with folk music and the folk music revival. Um, and he was really a direct influence on, on Bob Dylan. And um, so him and Ramblin' Jack Elliott. And so you're going to learn about that. And uh, you're going to learn about how folk music has, has traveled and weathered. And I want to tell you about a book. Um, if you're into this kind of stuff, obviously, you know that I am. And you see the books on my shelves behind me and all that. But there's this amazing book called On Highway 61. And it's uh, Music, Race, and the Evolution of Cultural Freedom. Uh, so it's a really great read. It's an important read. Highway 61, maybe some of you know the Bob Dylan uh, album, Highway 61 Revisited. But Highway 61 is an actual highway that runs from Louisiana, uh, from New Orleans, all the way up into Minnesota, uh, which is where Bob Dylan is from. And so this book uh, goes chronologically through uh, the experiences. And so it starts off talking about Thoreau and Mark Twain and Huckleberry Finn. Then it talks about ragtime, um, race in, in the United States from 1890s to the 1920s, then into blues and into jazz, Robert Johnson, into bebop, into folk music. And then there's a, a big section on Bob Dylan um, and his, you know, because Bob Dylan uh, was, was born in Minnesota. And so there is a connection and a thread that runs through Bob Dylan's work uh, through that. So you're going to learn about all of those things that lead to Bob Dylan. And Bob Dylan, as we've talked about, as I've talked about before, is a huge game changer, important figure, one of the top, you know, the top three, I would say without a, a doubt, Elvis, the Beatles, and Bob Dylan. And we can even see how the Beatles, you already learned about how the Beatles influenced Bob Dylan and how Bob Dylan influenced the Beatles. And Bob Dylan influenced many people. He's still alive. He's still out there. And he continues to do that. He, he uh, uh, has won the uh, uh, Pulitzer Prize for uh, literature. And um, he is a very, very important figure. He grew up in Minnesota. He moved to New York. Uh, to meet his idol, Woody Guthrie, and to uh, start his career as a folk singer, even though like a lot of these other artists, they started off playing in cover bands and doing, you know, uh, doo-wop and rock and roll and all of that. And and then he, uh, you know, started playing in the coffee houses in Greenwich Village, and he started expanding and he met Joan Baez. And uh, you're going to learn about his car whole career. And I can, I'm going to tell you right now that you're going to get asked questions about Bob Dylan, about his role in all of this. There is a lot of information in the book. It is important information and it is things that I will be looking for. Okay. So know that now. Spend that time in the textbook. You can ace all of these assignments if you're just going through the book, not plagiarizing the book, not quoting, 
you know, five, 10 sentences at a time out of the book, but going through absorbing the material that you're learning and then putting it down on paper so that it sticks with you. And again, listen to the playlist, listen to his music. The thing about folk music that's so important is that folk music is really about the words, okay? So you may or may not have the greatest singers, you may or may not have the greatest, you know, quote, musicians uh, in terms of playing their instruments, but the primary focus is the words. So the music itself is secondary. There are other genres, including genres that are current, that are like this, and you may get asked about that as well. What are, just start thinking about, what are other genres that the words are more important than the music underneath them? So I want you to, to think about that. Um, Bob Dylan um, was integral in influencing the Beatles as well as others. And one of the things that, that the Beatles did was influence Bob Dylan on the sense of melody. Bob Dylan influenced the Beatles on, on subject matter. Uh, and uh, Beatles also got Bob Dylan to look at, at electric instruments. And so it's very famous when he went electric and the impact of that. And I want you to understand too, because you may not get this directly, but when Bob Dylan went electric in 1965, and it's important that you know when and where that happened. Okay, so you'll learn about that and make sure you're looking for it. Um, that the attitudes at the time was that rock and roll music was, was, you know, lightweight, teenage, you know, dancing, hanging out, making out music, and it could have really no bearing in terms of weight of subject matter. And folk music is about the depth of the, the subject matter. So a lot of folk music is connected to, uh, you know, to the poor, to the oppressed, to workers, to the underserved, to the underclass. It is really the voice of the common person. And so when Bob Dylan went electric, it caused a huge rift for a little bit of time because his fans in the folk music world felt that you couldn't say anything meaningful in that. And Bob Dylan changed that landscape. And as a result, created a genre called folk rock. He then later created a genre uh, along with Graham Parsons called country rock that we will learn about later, but you'll learn about it a little bit in this chapter. And then out of that, um, came the singer songwriters. So folk singers, uh, tended to either, if they wrote, uh, that they, they might write their own songs, but they also did songs. Uh, there was a lot of songs that were standard folk songs. Um, and then, uh, but they, they often were acoustic guitar, maybe harmonica. It would be very stripped down up until Dylan went electric. It was primarily acoustic instruments. Um, and what then would happen was, um, it goes electric. And it's still though dealing with the same subject matter, but then along comes this thing called singer songwriters, sometimes electric, sometimes acoustic, but instead of speaking about the world out around them, it is right, the writers are writing introspectively. And this is where you get people like Joni Mitchell and James Taylor, uh, where they're writing about their own lives and the things that they're going through. And that was a big deal. Because remember, the Beatles were really the first major band that wrote their own songs, recorded their own songs, performed their own songs, and they influenced everybody afterwards. Bob Dylan was doing it, but that was in the little folk world and things started to shift dramatically in the 1960s. So one last thing I want you to be thinking about here in terms of material is I want you to think about the 60s and the things that are happening in the 60s. So so history matters. It, 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 history influences the art of a time. And so what do you have going on in the 60s? Well, you have the beginnings of the of Vietnam, which was a police action to start off with that ended up becoming a war. Young men were being drafted and they were going off to fight a battle and, and a war that many people didn't understand and many of them weren't coming back. And so there were protests developing around that. There were protestings developing around the civil rights movement. Um, and then in 1963, JFK gets assassinated. 1968, MLK gets assassinated, as does Robert Kennedy, uh, John F. Kennedy's brother. Um, you're really getting the height of Vietnam at this time. And this is uh, going to be hugely influential in terms of subject matter and what people are singing about, which made the singer-songwriters so different because they were writing just about their own sort of personal uh, things that were going on. And a lot of the folk people didn't like the singer-songwriters because they felt that they were just being whiny and self-centered and all of that. And then this is going to lead into psychedelic rock when we talk about uh, uh, Monterey Pop and uh, Woodstock and the hippie movement and all of that in 67. So so all of these times are gonna be overlapping. So right now you're gonna have this chapter, 
You're going to learn about these things. Take the time to learn about them. Use the book, use the online materials, and um, make sure that you're listening to the playlists. Again, get the sounds of these times in your head, because in some ways, it seems like a long time ago, 50 years ago, 60 years ago. Um, and yet some of the things that we're dealing with today uh, are are still around from that time. So take the time to do that. Uh, again, you have spring break after that. Please be thinking about your concert report. Um, please make sure that you're reading the comments. I know I keep harping on that, but, but there are students in here that are not, they're not improving and things aren't changing. So for example, a quick one, when you do your reflection observation, I ask you in the assignment every time to copy and paste the, the topic at the top. And I do that for your benefit so that you can read it one more time so that you will see it and go, hey, am I actually answering what is being asked of me? If you're not doing that, then uh, you're, you're missing out. And so in the comments, I'll say, hey, going forward, make sure that you're doing this. And I get some students that week after week after week aren't doing it, which tells me you're not reading the comments. Okay, read my comments so that you can improve, so that you can do better. I want you all to get A's in this class. Uh, I would love for you all to get great grades and walk out knowing this stuff and be passionate about it. That is my heart for you, right? I think you should know that by now. Um, but that means that you got to put in the stuff on your end. Okay, so that's it. Be thinking about your concert report. Um, uh, have a great week. I'll send out my normal Thursday reminder. I'll send out my normal Sunday reminder. So it's not like I'm, I'm dropping you off right now. Um, but do the stuff that you need to do. Take care and uh, we'll talk soon.